What up, YouTube? It's been a while, but I'm back here with the uh, black uh, 2022 Street Glide uh, ST. I know I've been talking for the longest about doing a video about the upgrades, and here I am back in the garage. It's a pretty crappy day outside today. So you can see the sun kind of hitting there. So I was gonna go out for a ride, but uh, I don't know, maybe later. Um, but anyway, this is the this is the black uh, 22 ST. And there go some people. I guess they're looking at the uh, lot next door. <laughs> She's dirty. Um, I haven't put no water in it, no water on her in a while. Um, been getting some riding in. Last weekend, I think I was out in, um, I was out in, uh, in Georgia. Me and some of the boys riding, having a little fun. Uh, visiting some other brothers but uh, anyway today's video we're going to talk about the upgrades and going over to the I had to put it down on the list and there's about almost 40 items there's almost like 40 things that I've done um, to this bike so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a seat and uh, go through all these items. I didn't do any um, engine work to the bike only because I did engine work on the previous bike. The uh, well, not even the previous bike, the bike before that, the uh, 04 Road King. You know, and after I did all that work, changing cams and head pipes and having things ported and all of that stuff, you know, it lasted for about a good three or four months before the bottom end just uh, needed to be um, rebuilt on the bike. So I wasn't interested in doing that. And that's why I ended up going with the uh, 21 Street Glide Special. And again, the only reason why I have the 22 uh, Street Glide ST is because I got just a really good deal on the bike. So I just pulled the trigger and went ahead and uh, purchased this uh, bike since it wasn't really, you know, in reality, it wasn't really costing me anything um, to do it. So it just made sense at the time. So anyway, let me grab, grab a seat and let's go through the items that are on this so. list. This is the list of items, and again, it's in no particular order. Um, one of the um, one of the things I have is the um, front wheel, uh, the front wheel axle cup covers. So, the front wheel axle covers are going to be right here. I'm gonna lower that down a little bit so you can see them. So these are the front wheel axle covers. Um, I was going to go with, um, oh wow, uh, Willy Shiny for the axle covers, but um, I had already ordered these off of uh, Amazon, I believe it was. But then I did get the uh, front wheel spacer and this actually came off of my um, 21 Street Glass Special, which was gray and black. So that's why this guy is black in here. So I was debating on if I wanted to send these back to Wooly Shiny and have him make it the bronze color, if he could match it, or just leave it at black. So you can see I decided to leave it at black. I don't think it looks that bad and you don't really see it. And again, just so you can get a good close up you know, the axle cover, and then the uh, front wheel spacer. So, and one of the things that the dealership did, where I bought the bike from, which was really cool, was they, um, they took most of the parts off of my old bike 
the 21 street glass special and they put it on to this 22 so that was another thing too that I, I was like okay well if you're gonna pull all of the parts that I put on the bike since the bike was brand new I was like well then all right that's fine I don't have a problem with that the next thing we got is the passing lamp assembly so i like to have as much light up front as possible so you know the bike normally just comes with the the light so you know the um turn signal here and the turn signal on the other side so what i did was i went with the harley um passing lamp assembly so um so i went with that and this because i just wanted as much light as possible uh the other thing i got was the custom dynamic um, light vent. So this you can get in like flat black or chrome or gloss black. So of course I went with gloss black because this bearing is gloss black as well. So I think this is a nice addition to the bike. Um, let's see. And then I also got the front fairing window trim. So that's this up here. So this is also lighting from Custom Dynamics. I believe all of these lights on this bike is from Custom Dynamics. Even on the passing, the passing lamps and the turn signal. So I changed that to the LED turn signal from Custom Dynamics. And then I have the halo um, turn signal um, light also from Custom Dynamics. Just to get a good look at how that looks with the bike on. Turn it down. So you can see how the front of the bike looks. Now the other thing that I also got from um, Custom Dynamic was the lower fairing um, inserts. So I like those as well. Um, when you turn on your signal, You know, that's how it looks. Another thing that I did as well is when you, um, normally when you turn on your passing lamps um, you can't have on your high beams at the same time so there's actually um, since there's actually a setting um, that they can do at Harley although Harley won't do it um, I actually have somebody else do it uh, so instead of you know solving that problem through wiring there's actually a setting where you can actually say that the uh, passing lamps stay on even if the high beams is on like now Let me turn on the high beams. So the high beams are on, but the passing lamps did not cut cut off. So you see how the passing the passing lamps just stayed on. So you know when I need as much light as possible, then you know I, I certainly can get get that light that light if I need it. Let's see, what else? Um, then we have the wind deflectors over here on the side. So I believe the ST had already come with it and I also had it on the other bike. So there was nothing to do there. Um, I already mentioned uh, the um, lower fairing inserts from Custom Dynamics. So that's good. Then we have the um, saddlebag latch lights. So these are the uh, latch lights. So I actually had these on, I had these on all my bikes. Um, but what I did with this guy here um, was I just went with the whole assembly that comes from um, Custom Dynamics. And this is how this guy looks when it's on. You see when you brake, it flashes, and when you signal, 
it also flashes. So you get to see that as well. So that's pretty cool. Then the other thing we got is the low profile backlights. I'll just put this right here. So as you can see the low profile bag lights, these are also from Custom Dynamics. Um, so they run brake uh, and turn as well. They don't pulsate, but that's because I need to make a change uh, to the connection under the seat. So until I get the uh, light for the tour pack on the back, then I'll go ahead and fix that. thing you can see that we got going on is the tour pack so let's raise this up a little bit so I have the uh, my friends call it the uh, pizza box or the useless um, tour pack but you know I can fit some stuff in there now mind you I can't fit a whole lot of stuff in there but um, you know whenever we go on rides and we're gonna be going for a few days I can fit some stuff in there as well as you know I can also still put stuff um, inside the uh, saddlebags. So this is not the king, and this is not the one in the middle. It's the, the first one, I forget the name of it, but um, this is the first model, um, or the first style tour pack, which is the sleekest, and then you have the one that's in the middle, and then you have the king tour pack, which is the big one. So uh, I didn't want the King one because I just think it makes the bike like an old man bike. And the one in the middle I probably should have gone with, but so far I'm still good with this. This guy, like I said, I can fit stuff um, inside of here. I mean, you can see I got things in here. Uh, tools, a uh, first aid kit. Um, this is a... Uh, this is a um, this is a, a pump for the uh, tire, I believe. No, this this is a battery charger. Battery charger. I got socket set, and then I have a uh, patch thing. Uh, so if I get a, a flat on the road, and then a few other tools, you know, T 27s and 25s and all that other stuff. Uh, and normally, whenever I'm uh, going on a long ride or anything. I'll take those things out of here and put them inside the uh, saddlebags and um, and then put whatever clothes I have inside here and then when I'm ready to go, you know, whenever I park the bike, just open it up, grab, grab the bag and go. So let's turn this off. So the other thing about this um, tour pack is the actual um, uh, bracket that it's on. So it's actually on a solo um, bracket. So you can see that here. This is a solo bracket as opposed to a two up bracket. So I never ride two up, I'm always solo. So I got the solo bracket and with the solo bracket, it, um, it brings the tour pack closer to to the seat and, and that's why it kind of looks like this is because of this solo um, solo rack so the other thing we got you can see here is the uh, Mustang seat where this guy just come comes out of course it's in there really good but uh but this just comes right right out if you need to pull it out um but i never it's i, I actually i never take take it out let me see how it comes up this has these notches um that keeps it in place so actually this one works better than the one that i had on my other bike because the other bike it just used to just come straight up um the notches didn't 
catch it at all. And then of course under the seat, I have the custom dynamics uh, triple play uh, that you know does the run brake turn and strobe stuff for the custom dynamic lights in the back. So that's under the seat. Uh, the other thing we got going on is the um, is the windshield by uh, Clockworks. I think this one is a six and a half. Let me just raise this up. I think this is a six and a half um, windshield, and this is tent. So originally I got the one that was smoked and that was just too dark. So then I sent it back and I got this tent one and that works out a whole lot, lot better. Um, the only thing that I may end up doing is a six and a half is almost right at the limit of me being able to see over it if I look down slightly. So I'm probably going to switch this out for a five inch. So uh, anybody who wants a six and a half inch uh, windshield, let me know and uh, we can uh, work out a price for it since it's used. But uh, but it's in good good condition. Uh, the other thing, uh, let's, let's go back down here. Uh, when on my other bike, I had the heel toe shifter, so I'm used to having it, and that's right here. You know, toe heel. Um, so what we did was on the ST, it doesn't come with this, so they just took it off of um, my other bike and just put it right on there. So that was fine with me. And then the uh, shift linkage, I changed it from that chrome one to this black and kind of machine chrome or machine colored. Um, so I switched out the uh, the one that comes stock to this one. Again, this is another part that they took off of my old bike and put it onto this, this bike. Um, the passenger foot pegs. So again, on the ST, it does not come with foot pegs. And you might say, well, you don't ride a passenger. So why do you want foot pegs on there? I just like the way they look. So again, they took it off of the old bike and put it on this, this bike. Um, yeah, so they just took it off the old bike, put it on this, this bike. And then the other thing we got is the, um, saddlebag um uh kind of crash guards so again this was on my old bike so they took it off the old bike put it on this put it on the new new bike and the same thing with the crash bars here this it comes with the mustang one i wanted to have lowers so i took off the uh the mustache bar and just put the old bar back on this bar is a bar that I, again i had just bought and put on my old bike so i told them take it off and put it on this this bike but also give me the um the mustache bar so they gave that back back to me the other thing is the zero frame mounted highway pegs so since i'm like five seven um you know having the ones that's up here you know there's no way i'm gonna reach those but here these guys are frame mounted right up under the uh footrest um so you know i could have my foot here i could put my foot here i could put my foot there there so i could do so many things with it and then it just kind of folds in uh whenever you're not using it but i normally just leave it down Let's see, I'm gonna come back up here. I have um, this phone mount. Um, and with this phone, phone mount, I'm looking at it, it's actually upside down, but that's fine. Um, with this phone mount, um, it just charges your phone. So as soon as you plug up your phone, um, it just charges. So I like that. So that way I keep my phone always charged when I'm riding. Um, then I have uh, this over here, it's another phone mount. Uh, this is the Freak mount, so it's magnetic. And it doesn't scratch your tank. Um, so I do like that as well, because a lot of times I'll have 
one phone here and then I'll have another phone on this this side as well uh, the other thing is we have the engine uh, heat shields that's this right there the heat shields and I'll take you around to the other side because you'll see that the other side is a little bit different so you see how the other side I'll lower this down a little bit it's a little shorter and it has the cutout to allow for the cool flow the Harley cool flow fan because I have that installed as well so when I when I got the fan when I pur purchased the fan from Harley and had and, and installed it I also um, switched out the um, I also switched out these engine these engine heat shields and I went with the ones that have a little bit of a cut so that way this guy can fit in there without a problem Let's see, what else, what else, what else? The other thing we got is the, um, let me get in here. The other thing we got is the uh, flush mount gas tank. So this is actually the second one. So the first one I bought from Harley, for whatever reason, this guy would not twist and would not open. So I would get to a gas station, would be, be there, minutes trying to get this guy open because it just would not twist back so i don't know it looks good but i don't know with as much hassles as i've had with trying to open these every now and again it almost just makes you just want to keep the old one just the regular twist one and call it a day let's see what else we got uh, we got the saddlebag uh, latches, see if you can see those. So that's right here. So these are Kyriakins. These latches here, they just feel really nice to the touch and they're nice and heavy. So. I had originally ordered the black ones from Harley, and then I saw these and sent those guys back, and I got these from uh, Kyriakin, so I like these a whole lot better. They look better. And they have a nice feel to them with this little rubber piece here. Um, back here, back to the back again. Get as close as I can. You can see the docking station. Um, so it just so happened that the dealer had already had the docking station hardware on there. And even if they didn't, I was gonna tell them to take it off the old bike and put it on the new bike, but this bike already had it. Um, and then I got the magnetic um, covers, which are really cool. And I think these are from Hogworks. So I really like these magnetic covers. They have a lot of pull to them and they just snap right, right on. And that just cleans up the back, back of the bike completely. The other thing you've seen already is the Dominator Fender. So I got the Dominator Fender from Advent Black. Uh, it's really cool. And you know, it has the smoke light to go with the smoke. Um, low profile bag lights and then the smoke uh, turn signals there on the side. So that looks good. I like the way that looks. I also went with the Advent Black um, stretch bags. The reason why I went with the stretch bags is I just think they look better. Um, and yeah, I know some people would say, well, you turned the bike into a special or you have a tour pack on there and you kind of turned it into an ultra. But, you know, I turned it into what I wanted. So, um, the other thing I did was the Harley, I don't know if you can see that here. Well, yeah, you're not really gonna be able to see it, but I did the, um, the Harley oil cooler. So that's down here too, is the oil cooler. Uh, so I have the oil cooler as well as the cool flow fan. Um, you know, one, the fan to try to keep my leg cool. 
and then the oil cooler just to try to keep keep the oil cool. Um, one of the things that I forgot to do from my old bike was I had my uh, exhaust shields uh, ceramic coated and I forgot to tell them to take it off the bike and these guys just stain up so easily so I'm probably going to take these off and get them ceramic coated. Tab exhaust with the turned down uh, tips you know normally the tips might be turned the other way but it flows better down uh, when you have the cutout when you have the extended bags and also this dominator uh, fender as well so just a quick sound of how we sound tab exhaust sounds. I'm really thinking about uh, switching this exhaust out for um, the SVTs. Uh, they have some new ones out. So I had the jackhammers on the other, on my first bike, the um, Road King, and I like the way they sounded with the SNS um, head pipe. So I may switch this exhaust out. Um, and when I do, if, if I do switch, I'm going to do the whole exhaust, the, the exhaust, the head, head pipe, everything, because that just opens up the bike so much more. Um, the other thing we got, which you've already seen, is the stereo. So once I upgraded the stereo, what I had to do was I also had to do a lithium battery. So I installed the lithium battery. It was a NOCO. Um, a NOCO uh, NLP NLP 30 is what I got and um, and it's been working flawlessly I mean uh, the bike just always starts up right on the dime I also got the um, the adapter piece because when you do the connection uh, to put it on the triple charger um, the connection is different uh, coming from this bike, uh, well, coming from, from the battery, but I still wanted to be able to plug up other things that use this kind of connection, you know, like the legacy connection um, from the tender that's, that's already on the bike. So I went to uh, NOCO. And I got this adapter. So, and that's all it does. Cause this is the regular connection here. So you just plug this into this and then you back to the regular connection. And that's, um, and that's a NOCO, the NOCO adapter. And then I also have the NOCO um, um, trickle charger too, uh, which does lithium, regular batteries. It does all the battery types. Uh, the other thing I did was I changed the the lighting on the gauges, and I also did the lighted uh, hand signals too. So let me turn off the light and close the garage so you can see that. So you can see how now this is not that orange look; it's uh, really bright white. And the dials, I did orange with red tips, but I think I'm going to change the dials out either to a bright white or to a, um, or to a red co color, so that way it stands out a little bit more. And then you can also see the uh, lighted signals there. Let me get a better look at how this looks at night. So you see the lighted hand signals here. See there, there, and then again, bright, bright, bright white. 
So again, like I said, I will change these dials um, because I was gonna change the um, I was gonna change the gauges to um, oh, I forget the name of the company, um, but I was like, well, I could just change the lighting in the back, um, the LED lighting to the back to something brighter and better, um, and it's uh, cheaper, and I do like the way this looks. Instead of the oh, Dakota, Dakota digital um, gauges. I didn't necessarily need that because I was going to go that route, but I just think this is fine. So in terms of the upgrade to the bike, that's pretty much the list of everything that I've done. Uh, to the bike and you can see most the majority of well all of the upgrades are really um, cosmetic and then the only other ones kind of engine related is the oil cooler and the cool flow fan and that's not really engine related that's just blowing some cool air um, onto the bike or onto the the rear head um, but other than that, I'm I'm, like, I'm, lo I'm loving the bike. I uh, I think I've I've had it since July. I don't think I didn't start really riding it until the end of July. So I think I have six thousand miles on it. Um, uh, yeah, six thousand miles. Um, and of course, scheduled to put some more miles on it. Um, I was just gonna ride this one, and uh, and just stick with it. I'm trying to make sure I got everything on here. Looking at batteries, drive cards, sound system, blah, 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 flush mount. Yeah, I mean, that, that seems like everything. So that's about a good 40 items or 40 things that I've added to the bike. Um, some you can just visually see, others are kind of behind the scenes that you don't see. The other thing that I did want to do was change out all of these, you know, machine colored screws to something black. I don't know why you have a blacked up bike and you don't have black screws, but whatever, that's Harley. And they're crap. Um, we talked about the sound system before. But if anybody has any questions about any. Of course, my battery died, so uh, <laughs> I'm just finishing up the video. Um, another thing that I wanted to show was inside my bags. Um, I get a lot that um, that the speaker takes up so much space uh, inside your bag. So just so you can get a look at inside the bag and how much space is actually still in the bag, even with having a tin in there. So let me get a light, you know, this amount of space, but I still have all this left and down there as well. So, so you know, when you know, folks say, oh, you put these speakers in your bag, you know, these speakers in your bike, and um, you know, you take up so much space and I don't wanna give up my bag space. I get it, I do, I get it. But I just feel like I still have enough space left for me to stick things um, inside the bag. My book slide back in there. And so somebody also asked, uh, for me to play some different songs. Now mind you, I'm in my garage, but you can see that we have uh, two six by nines, one here, one over there, and then I have uh, two tens, one in the back, two tens, two eights um, in the, in the um, back of the bag, as opposed to you have some people that put tens inside the bag, it goes right here in the middle. And yeah, I would agree that that literally takes up all the space in your bike or in your bag. So I wasn't interested in doing that. Um, 
So let's see what we can get out of here. Now, mind you, again, I'm in my um, garage, and it would be nice if I had a key. So you actually hear the fan um, cutting on. Flash. 